Hi, good morning, happy Monday. I hope your week is off to a good start. Um, I wanted to come on here and highlight and show some of the resources that I've been talking about on my blog this month. Um, in January, I've been spending a lot of time talking about independent reading. Um, and the reason for doing so is one, independent reading is important. And it's something that we should be doing every day in our classrooms, but two, um, a lot of times this is the time of year where we will notice our students um, might have a little bit of a backslide with their independent reading. A lot of times when we come back from winter break, students might not be as interested um, in independent reading. It has kind of become a normal part of their routine, so it's not as exciting. Um, and also too, they might have lost some of their reading stamina if they weren't able to read over the break. And so as a teacher, it might be time for you to introduce um, some new books, some new routines, some new structure, or some new accountability measures. Um, I know I've seen a lot of questions posted in various Facebook groups and on Instagram about how do we hold our students accountable for independent reading. And last week, my blog post kind of talked about four different strategies that I use or four different resources. And I wanted to come on here today and then show you what those resources actually look like so you can kind of see them in action. Um, so first of all, anytime that I am giving students an accountability um, tool or accountability measure for independent reading, my number one goal is always to keep the priority on reading. So I don't ever want to give my students an assignment um, or a response activity that's going to take them longer to complete than the time that they would have to read. So I want them to spend the bulk of that time reading and then give them just a very little bit of time at the end to complete the response activity. So everything I'm going to show you would take students just a few minutes to complete, which means they have more time to focus on independent reading, which is the goal. So um, the first little accountability tool that I like to give my students, and this is actually one of my favorite resources, are these reading response, I call them my stop and jot sticky notes. And um, all they are is a sticky note that has a little graphic organizer template on it. And students can take these and they can stick them in their reading notebook, their reading journal, um, or they can stick them in the actual book that, as they are reading. Um, and I love them for a couple of reasons. One, um, they're small, they're cute, they're little, and they're sticky. Students, for whatever reason, love a sticky note, and they get kind of impressed when you can give them these sticky notes that you've been able to print on. They think that's magical. Um, but two, the amount of space for students to write is small, which means they are not overwhelmed by this task. Um, and they're pretty open-ended. So whatever skill you're working on, you can give students that sticky note. And then as they're reading, they just jot down a few notes about that skill, stick it in their book, and then you can follow up during a strategy group, during a reading conference, or they can share that with a friend at the end of um, their independent reading. Um, a lot of times I would give students an entire page. So I would print just a page that has six different reading skills on them and then tell students that by the end of the week, they've had to use all six. So basically every day they're using one, maybe one day they have to use two, um, but then they can pick and choose which templates they want to use with the book that they're reading. Um, you can also print them so you can print the same template on a page. So if you're working on, let's say, comparing and contrasting, you can give every student the same one. Um, so these are a really great tool just because, like I said, they're not an overwhelming amount of space for students to write on. So if they're small mini, which leads me to my next tool, graphic organizers, but in the mini size. Again, a lot of times students get overwhelmed at the amount of writing that they have to complete um, if they're going to do a reading response assignment. Um, so rather than giving them an entire page, you can take your graphic organizer and you can shrink it down on the copy machine to either get it to be a half page or a quarter page. The ones that I sell in my TPT store are already formatted for a quarter page. Um, so again, this template is a lot less overwhelming for students to complete than if you give them a whole page. A lot of times if you give students an entire graphic organizer, they're going to feel like they have to spend the whole time working on it because they're worried they're not going to get done in time. This, if you give them, they can see this. They'll say, you know what, I can get that done in a few minutes. I will spend the majority of my time reading and then I can complete it quickly at the end. So um, graphical organizers are a great tool, but I like to make them small whenever possible, um, just because that's less space for your students to write and more time for them to read. Um, another way that I like to hold my students to their independent reading is um, at the end, having them find a friend and talk about their book. Um, so no writing is involved, which means they get to spend the whole time reading. And then at the end, they um, will take maybe five minutes for our independent reading time or five minutes at the end of Reader's Workshop, and they will find a friend and then they will talk about that. Um, and a couple ways that I try to make sure that conversation stays on task and it's actually intentional is I give my students thinking stems or question stems that are related to the skills that they're reading. So I have these um, comprehension bookmarks 
and um, they have the, on the front, they have just kind of a description of the skill, but then on the back, they have these thinking stems or the question stems. Um, so if you're working on a specific skill, you can tell students at the end of your independent reading, you are going to ask a friend about, you know, one of the skills related to asking and answering questions. So the conversation that they're having is not necessarily about the book, but it is about the reading strategy or skill that you're working on, which is great because then kids can have a meaningful conversation, even if they haven't shared a book. Um, another thing that you can do then to help, especially students, if they um, maybe feel like a struggling reader or a student who feels really uncomfortable talking with their classmates, you can tell them to pick which question they feel most comfortable to answer and then when they find their friend they can say can you ask me this question and then they feel prepared um, so again just simply having a very focused and intentional conversation is another great way to hold your students accountable to independent reading and you never have to have them write a thing which again more time for actual reading which is what we want to focus on um, and then the last thing I'm going to show you, you can actually grab these for free on my website and I will link them in my, um, I'll link them in the comments below. But these are, I call them my accountability, accountability bookmarks for independent reading. And they are simply just a little goal setting tool. Um, I have them for um, the video, the camera's reversed, so I have to make sure I'm doing it the right way. I have them for genres. So students can go through and say, today I am reading a book, a fantasy book and then if you use a little mini clothespin or you can use a paper clip um, and then they can just indicate what genre they're reading today and I've got a variety of genres there. Um, I like using this for genres for a couple of reasons. One, it reminds students that there are so many genres that they should explore. So if every day they're saying I'm going to read fiction, after a while they might say you know what like I read a lot of fiction let me try something else. So it's just a good visual for what they're reading. Um, but then two, you can use this as almost like a sorting tool. So at the end, when students are finding a partner for that discussion, you can say find someone who read the same genre as you or find someone who read a different genre than you. Um, you can also use this as a visual when you're doing independent reading conferences. So as you're walking around, if you notice that you have a student who's been reading a biography, you know then that you can start asking them questions about that specific genre, why they chose it, what they've learned from it. Um, so this can be just, again, another tool that you can use for your reading conferences. Um, the other version is reading skills or reading strategies. So again, they've got them on the front and on the back and students can just say today I want to work on closing. And that's not going to be obviously the only reading skill that they're going to work on. But again, it's almost just like a little mini goal setting commitment. They're saying today this is what I'm going to focus on. They're going to be more likely to follow through with it if they make that commitment in the beginning. Um, and then this is a great way for you when you sit on a conference with them, you can see what skill or strategy they've been working on. You can then even reference this if you have a specific skill or strategy you need them to work on, you can reference this here. Um, again, you can use this as a sorting tool at the end. So students find someone who is working on a similar strategy, different strategy, um, but it just works great as a little accountability tool, a good visual too. Um, as students are reading, they can be reminded of all of the skills they should be working on and it can help them to set their intentions for the day. So there you have it. I feel like I was talking so fast. So sorry if this is difficult to understand, um, but really four simple tools that you can implement today um, for independent reading. Um, and remember the whole goal of accountability tools and independent reading is not to give our students a long lengthy assignment. It's not to have them recall every single detail of what they've read. It's not to have them complete, you know, a plethora of passages and multiple choice questions. We want to make sure that they are focused on independent reading and whatever tool we give them for accountability should support their reading, not take away from it. So hopefully you find some of these helpful um, and I hope you have a great week.